This video is going to attempt to find some new identities around sums, differences, and products that are very useful to us as we simplify trig equations. These trig identities you do not need to memorize, but you should be definitely aware of them and how to use them. So we're going to find a couple new trig identities. So we'll answer the question, what are some sum, difference, and product identities. And the first identity we're going to call the sum and difference identities. And to set these up, we're going to start with a our unit circle. And I'm going to put a point on it up here. We'll call that P. And a point over here we'll call Q. And it opens up to P and opens up to Q. We'll call the big angle with P alpha. And the small angle with Q we'll call beta. And we also know that then if point P has angle alpha, cosine will give the x-coordinate. So the cosine of alpha is the x-coordinate. And sine will give the y-coordinate, so the sine of alpha. Similarly, with point Q, cosine of the beta angle will give the x-coordinate. And sine of the beta angle will give the y-coordinate. And if I was interested in the angle that goes from P to, I'll call the origin O, to Q, that is going to be the difference between the alpha angle minus the beta angle. So if we opened up alpha and cut off the beta at the bottom, it just gives us that angle in between them. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take that blue looking triangle. We'll go ahead and connect this line P to Q. I'm going to take that blue triangle, and I'm going to rotate that blue triangle so that it rests on the x-axis. And so now it's a smaller triangle. So it's probably going to be in the first quadrant now. It looks kind of like an acute angle. We'll call this C. Um, to the origin and D. And this triangle is the exact same triangle. I've just rotated it. And so what we know then is C will have an x coordinate of our angle. It's the same angle. It's the same POQ angle, which means its angle is alpha minus beta. So therefore, the cosine of alpha minus beta will give us the x-coordinate of C. And the sine of alpha minus beta will give us the y-coordinate of C. D is nice and easy, though, because D is directly to the right on the unit circle. It's 1 comma 0. What I need to notice about these two triangles, even though I didn't draw them the same size, they're supposed to represent the same triangle, just shifted over. On these triangles, the line CD is going to be congruent or equal to the line PQ. So let's look at both PQ and CD using the distance formula. The distance formula comes from the Pythagorean theorem. It's the square root of the x's squared plus the square root of the y squared. And so we can take the square root of both sides. And we find out that side CD is equal to the square root of the difference in the x's, which is going to be the cosine of alpha minus beta minus 1, all of that squared, plus the difference in the y's. That's going to be the sine of alpha minus beta plus 0. 
squared. Let's play with this a bit before we get to PQ. Let's go ahead and multiply that out. So we've got the square root of squaring the first binomial. It's going to be cosine squared of alpha minus beta minus 2 times the cosine of alpha minus beta plus 1. Plus, we have a sine squared of alpha minus beta. Now, what you might notice in that is we have a sine squared plus cosine squared, which together equal 1. So if sine squared plus cosine squared equal 1, and we add another 1 to that, together we've got 2, 1 plus 1, and then still the minus 2 cosine of alpha minus beta. So that's our CD line. Let's look at PQ and do much the same thing with the PQ line. So PQ, using the distance formula, is equal to the square root of the difference in the x's, cosine of alpha minus the cosine of beta squared, plus the difference in the y's, sine of alpha minus the sine of beta squared. If we multiply all of that out, we end up with the square root of cosine squared alpha minus 2 cosine alpha cosine beta plus cosine squared beta plus sine squared alpha minus 2 sine alpha sine beta. I'm running out of room, so I'm going to write a little below it, plus sine squared of beta. But again, you'll notice we have cosine squared of alpha and sine squared of alpha. That adds up to 1. We have cosine squared of beta and sine squared of beta. That adds up to 1. So what we end up with is the square root of 1 plus 1 is 2 minus 2 cosine alpha cosine beta minus 2 sine alpha sine of beta. Well, we said at the beginning that these two lengths, CD and PQ, are equal to each other, which means these two distances must be equal to each other. Let's see what happens when we play with that fact then. Let's square both sides. Let's switch colors and go back to blue. Square both sides. That gets rid of the square roots. So we have 2 minus 2 cosine of alpha minus beta equals 2 minus 2 cosine alpha cosine beta minus 2 sine alpha sine beta. What I want to notice is both sides of this equation have a 2 on them. So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. And that leaves us with negative 2 cosine of alpha minus beta equals negative 2 cosine of alpha cosine of beta minus 2 sine of alpha sine of beta. And then finally, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2 all the way across. And this will give us our first formula. We call these sum and difference formulas because it's going to start with the difference. The cosine of alpha minus beta, if I'm subtracting two angles inside the cosine, that is equal to the cosine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle minus the sine of the first angle plus, sorry, negative divided by a negative is a positive, plus the sine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle. 
this is our first sum and difference formula. It's actually a difference formula because it's cosine. All of that coming from the two triangles being the same. We can actually have four of these sum and difference formulas, but really they come from what we did up above. If I were to let beta equal negative gamma, and I'll call this equation 1, in equation 1, the formula changes. The formula becomes the cosine of alpha minus, now that's negative gamma, equals the cosine of alpha cosine of, now that's negative gamma, plus the sine of alpha sine of, now that's negative gamma. We know in the first cosine minus a negative means we add the positive. In the middle, the cosine of a negative is the same as the cosine of a positive. And at the end, the sine of a negative, we can pop that negative out in front. And so when we put that together, we get our second formula. This time, it's a sum, cosine of alpha plus gamma is equal to the cosine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle minus, this time, the sine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle. And that is how we can take the cosine of a sum, in this case, or a difference in equation 1, and split it up to individual sines and cosines of the individual angles. Going back to that first equation, what if I let alpha equal pi over 2 minus delta in equation 1? Now we've got the cosine of alpha, which is pi over 2 minus delta minus beta, equals the cosine of pi over 2 minus delta times the cosine of beta plus the sine of pi over 2 minus delta times the sine of beta. If you remember from our graphs of sine and cosine, the graph of sine started at 0 and shifted around. The graph of cosine started at 1 and shifted around. The key points of those graphs only differ from each other by the amount of pi over 2. They've shifted pi over 2 every time. All of the points have shifted pi over 2. So pi over 2 minus an angle will give us the opposite trig function. So where I see cosine of pi over 2 minus delta minus beta, I could think about that as pi over 2 minus delta plus beta, shifts cosine pi over 2, we end up with the sine of delta plus beta equals when the cosine gets shifted pi over 2, it becomes the sine of delta cosine of beta. Probably don't need those parentheses anymore. Plus, when sine gets shifted by pi over 2, it becomes the cosine of delta times the sine of beta. And so this then becomes our third function. A sine of a sum is equal to the sine of the first angle times the cosine of the second plus the cosine of the first angle times the sine of the second. And yes, we have a difference formula for sine as well. We're going to build it in much the same way we built that 
cosines, we're going to let beta equal negative epsilon, as we're working through our Greek alphabet today, in equation number 3. When we do that, we get the sine of delta plus a negative epsilon equals the sine of delta cosine of a negative epsilon plus the cosine of delta sine of negative epsilon. Well, adding a negative is the same as saying delta minus epsilon. So that's going to give us the subtraction we want. A negative inside a cosine is the same as a positive inside a cosine. And a negative inside a sine can come out, making the whole thing negative. And this is going to give us our fourth sum and difference, that the sine of delta minus epsilon is equal to the sine of delta times the cosine of epsilon minus the cosine of delta sine of epsilon. And so if we have the sine of a difference, it's equal to the sine of the first, cosine of the second, minus cosine of the first, sine of the second. And that completes our four sum and difference formulas. We're going to play with these four sum and different formulas to create another set of identities called the product to sum identities. First, we're going to start with the sine of alpha plus beta, which I've changed the Greek letters, but it's the same formula as above. That's the sine of alpha cosine of beta plus the cosine of alpha sine of beta. And we're going to compare it with the sine of alpha minus beta which is equal to the sine of alpha cosine of beta minus the cosine of alpha sine of beta. And what's interesting is what happens when we add these two functions together. When we add these two functions together, on the left, we get the sine of alpha plus beta plus the sine of alpha minus beta. But on the right, we have like terms, so we get 2 sine alpha cosine beta. But the last part subtracts out to 0. And if I divide both sides by 2 to clear out that 2 and switch the order of the equation, we're going to write that the sine of alpha times the cosine of beta is equal to that divide by 2 I'm going to write as a 1 half sine of alpha plus beta plus the sine of alpha minus beta. And this becomes our first product to sum identity. If I multiply in a sine times a cosine, we can use this formula to rewrite them as two signs with the sum and the difference. And we can do much this same process to get all of the combinations of sine times cosine, cosine times sine, cosine times cosine, and sine times sine. For example, if we did the cosine of alpha plus beta, we know from up above in section A that that's the cosine of alpha cosine of beta minus the sine of alpha sine of beta. And we can add to it the cosine of alpha minus beta, which we know is now the cosine of alpha cosine of beta plus the sine of alpha sine of beta. And when we add those together, we end up with cosine of alpha plus beta plus cosine of alpha minus beta is equal to 2 of these cosine alphas, cosine betas. And the last part adds to 0. Divide by 2. And I'm going to switch the order that we write it. We'll put the right side first, 
cosine of alpha times the cosine of beta is 1 half of the cosine of alpha plus beta plus the cosine of alpha minus beta. And that is our second of three product to sum identities. Let's take a look at a third. We've got sine cosine, which is the same as cosine sine. We've got cosine cosine. Now we need sine sine. We're going to look pretty similar to what we did last time, but I'm going to start with cosine of alpha minus beta. And we're going to, this time, subtract cosine of alpha plus beta. Let's see what that gives us. So on top, cosine of alpha minus beta is the cosine of alpha times the cosine of beta plus the sine of alpha times the sine of beta. Alpha plus beta is the cosine of alpha times the cosine of beta minus the sine of alpha sine of beta. And I said we're going to subtract these. I'm going to distribute that negative through. And when we do, we get the cosine of alpha minus beta minus the cosine of alpha plus beta is equal to. This time, the middle terms will subtract out. And we have two of these sine alphas, sine betas. There's our sine sine. We just need to divide by 2 to get our final product to sum formula. Switching the order again, sine alpha sine beta is equal to 1 half times the cosine of alpha minus beta minus the cosine of alpha plus beta. And this becomes our third product to sum identity. So we've looked at how we can add sines and cosines. We've looked at how we can change products into sums. We're going to go the other direction for our last set of identities. We're going to look at how we can change sums to products. And actually, we're going to use the formulas we just saw. For example, we know now that the sine of alpha times the cosine of beta opposite trig functions is 1 half times the sine of alpha plus beta plus the sine of alpha minus beta. And we're going to do a little substitution with this formula. We're going to let u equal alpha plus beta and v equal alpha minus beta. And adding those together tells me u plus v is equal to two alphas, or that alpha is u plus v divided by 2. Similarly, if I had subtracted them, u is equal to alpha plus beta, v is equal to alpha minus beta. If I subtract them, which is going to change all the signs, we get u minus v equals 2 betas. And dividing by 2 gives us u minus v divided by 2 is equal to beta, which means we can rewrite our formula as the sine of alpha, which is u plus v divided by 2, times the cosine of beta, which is u minus v divided by 2, is equal to 1 half of the sine of alpha plus beta, which is u, plus the sine of alpha minus beta, which is just v. And because we're going to try and avoid that fraction, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 to clear the fraction. And this will give us our first sum to product identity. We get that 2 sine of u plus v divided by 2 cosine of u minus v divided by 2 is equal to 
sine of u plus the sine of v. I probably should have written that the opposite direction, because normally we start with the sum of two sines and change it to the product of a sine and cosine. We're going to call this equation 1. Actually, for clarity, we've already got a 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's call this equation 5. Because I'm going to refer to that here in number 2. I'm going to let v equal negative w. When I do that, the formula up above, I'm going to do that in number 5. When I do that, the formula up above now becomes 2 sine of u plus negative w over 2 cosine of u minus negative w over 2 equals the sine of u plus the sine of now negative w. And what's nice about this is we know plus a minus is the same as subtract. Minus a minus is the same as add. And a negative inside a sine can come out as a negative. And you put that all together. And we're going to get our difference formula. That 2 sine of u minus w over 2 times cosine of u plus w over 2 equals the sine of u minus the sine of w. And that becomes our second, this time a difference to product formula. Well, we've got the sum and difference of sine. We just have to create the sum and difference of cosine. And we're going to do it in much the same way we built those first two. We're going to start with the fact that we know the cosine of alpha times the cosine of beta is 1 half times the cosine of alpha plus beta plus the cosine of alpha minus beta. And again, we're going to let u, I'll do this in blue, let u equal alpha plus beta. v is alpha minus beta. Adding them together will give us u plus v equals two alphas. Dividing by 2 tells us that alpha is u plus v divided by 2 again. Very similar, we're going to let u equal alpha plus beta, v equal alpha minus beta. And this time, we're going to subtract, which changes all the signs. u minus v is 2 beta. Divide by 2. Beta is u minus v divided by 2, just like last time. But this time, we have cosines instead of sines. So we end up with the cosine of alpha, which is u plus v divided by 2, times the cosine of beta, which is u minus v divided by 2, equals 1 half times the cosine of alpha plus beta, which we know is just u plus the cosine of alpha minus beta, which is just v. And then we like to clear that fraction by multiplying both sides by 2 to get our third formula, that 2 cosine of u plus v over 2 times cosine of u minus v over 2 is equal to the cosine of u plus the cosine of v. Now we've got our cosine plus cosine changing into a product. We have one left. What we did last time to find the difference is we just made the last variable negative because we could pull it out of the sign. It would become sine minus sine. With cosine just making it negative, that doesn't quite work because the cosine of a negative is the positive cosine of the positive. So 
Instead, we're going to use another one of our product formulas. We're going to start with sine of alpha sine of beta equals 1 half cosine of alpha minus beta minus the cosine of alpha plus beta. And again, we're going to let u equal alpha plus beta, v equal alpha minus beta. And I'm not going to do it again. It's exactly the same as the last two times that we did it. Alpha is equal to u plus v over 2. And beta becomes u minus v over 2. So that when we substitute, we get the sine of alpha, which is u plus v over 2, times the sine of beta, which is u minus v over 2 is equal to 1 half times the cosine of alpha minus beta, which is u, minus the cosine of alpha plus beta, which is v. And again, we'll multiply by 2 to get 2 sine of u plus v over 2 times the sine of u minus v over 2 is equal to the cosine of u minus the cosine of v. And that becomes our next formula. So we've talked about a lot of formulas and where they come from in this video. We, did the, we started with the sum and difference formulas, came up with four of those, the cosine of alpha plus or minus beta and the sine of alpha minus beta. We use those to make our product to sum formulas, sine times cosine, cosine times cosine, and sine times sine. And we use those to build our sum to product formulas. Sine plus sine, sine minus sine, cosine plus cosine, and cosine minus cosine. Now that we have all these formulas, we need to look at how to use them. But that's going to be saved for another video.